It's great. The next one is also by Jonathan Harris. This one is a little bit harder to take. So this is about a whale hunt story where he went out on an exhibition and um, did whale hunting. Uh, and what he did was he took photos the whole time. I think he, did, he took photos every minute or every five minutes, but then if there was a, an event kind of happening, he would take more. So that's what this, kind of, this line along here is. So this is showing us you can immediately see when the action occurred from, just from this timeline and you can select images along there. Again, he has a way, a ways of sorting through it. So you can, show, you can look at photos that, are, that have certain characters in the narrative in it or you can have certain contexts or certain locations. I'll open it up and we can have a look. So that's Jonathan Harris there. That's an image of himself. Um, so if we click on this whale, this is how we can sort through and pick the certain things we want. So at the moment I had images that were from this place called Barrow in Alaska. But if I want, I can show photos from <coughs> the Arctic Ocean. Oh, I don't want all of them selected. So let's have a look at the ones that are from the actual ocean. Now you can have a look through this timeline. This is where it's likely to be a bit more disturbing. <coughs> Getting closer. Okay, I can see red now. So, um, Sorry if that's disturbing for you. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get to the home page because at the home page you can see all of the, the photos at once and you can see it in another form. So you can see it like this and it's really interesting the way the colours in the images you can read it immediately kind of what might have been going on and then you can go through and just pick. And there are some really beautiful images as you go through. I don't know what this was about. So this was just a series of photographs that he obviously took, um, kept some tagging information, so tagged location, person, uh, context, all of those things so that you can then sort through it later on. So that's how he thought about how he would display his data. <coughs> this must have been, I don't know what they're all looking at. Um, but yeah, it's just a really beautiful way of telling a story through images and allowing the reader to go and explore that story in their own way. So again, if you want, you can go and have a look at that. I find it fascinating just to have a look at the context that he was in. In here, you can pick photos of the different people in the cast, even though it's real life events. Um, you can pick different things, so games, kids, Moby Dick, the whales, paperwork, prayer. So you can see all these different elements in his narrative, so the way that he's kind of broken it down and the way you can go and look through it. I think it's, it's a wonderful way of experiencing a storyline. Oh. Okay, so this is his kind of hit how he was feeling, relaxed, fast or frantic, if you wanted to see all the crazy kind of moments. Alrighty. This one is a favourite of mine and whenever I show it to students they always just sit on it for half an hour and I can never get their attention back. Uh, but it basically it's a, you can sort through names. So you can search for na through names and it shows you how popular those names have been over time. Um, so you can see Colleen there. I'll open it up and search for some names if we like of some people here. Um, but you can tell that my name's a bit of a 1950s kind of name, Colleen. That's why that's why Colleen on Home and Away is you know older. <laughs> and that's why people tend to think of it a bit more of a grandma name. Um, but let's have a look. So if I type in just my name, so this is, or you can um, you can just look through it this way. So this is kind of the popularity over time. 
you can just say, oh, these names have been really popular recently. I might not call my kid Aldo or Aiden or Alex. See? I should have been born in the 50s, 60s. But instead I was born around here where it wasn't quite so cool to be called Colleen. <laughs> Does anyone else want their name to be searched? Yeah, what's your name? Anna? A double N A? Let's have a look. Whoa. Yours is quite an old worldly name, but it's also been popular in um currently as well. And you can also see other similar names, so it will show you that. Um, does anyone else want to see their name? What about Rose? Rose? You can also do it by just typing in, see I've only typed the first two letters. So some people when they're thinking of names for their kids, they're like, oh I like one starting with Z or, you know. <laughs> Whoa. So Rose is also quite an old worldly name. Is that here? Yeah, must be. See, I like that as well, like reading into things. Matthew, thank you. Is it double T? Whoa, 80s. He's an 80s child. <laughs> I thought it would be a much older name. I thought it would have been popular. I wonder what the spike in that was all about. What about just Matt? Matilda is pretty popular back in the days. Yeah, the data stops in 2009, which is a bit of a pity. So you can't see it till currently. Does anyone else want to have a go? Brittany, yeah. Keisha? Look, it goes back to the 60s. You think it's a bit more of a modern name than that. What, what should we do? Brittany? Is it any Y? <laughs> Sorry. Yep, quite popular recently. So yeah, you can just look for ages on this and get stuck in it. And I really like when you just type in a few of them. Um, yeah, you could do something like that. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Or what types of languages are books? So yeah, that's a that's a time waster. That one. <laughs> uh, this one is um, visualizing world history, or it's um, yeah, it's very fascinating. This guy had some videos earlier on, and then a couple of years ago, and he decided to do this interesting thing where he was there in physical space and um, kind of indicating where things were. Uh, so we'll have a look at this. It's a really nice way of kind of telling world history and how things have changed. Do you think I should read Visualization is right at the heart of my own Leave work too. I teach global health. And I know having the data is not enough. I have to show it in ways people both enjoy and understand. Now, I'm going to try something I've never done before. Animating the data in real space with a bit of technical assistance from the crew. So, here we go. First, an axis for health. Life expectancy from 25 years to 75 years. And down here, an axis for wealth. Income per person. 400, 4,000 and $40,000. So, down here is poor and sick. And up here, is rich and healthy. Now, I'm going to show you the world 200 years ago, in 1810. Here come all the countries. 
Europe brown, Asia red, Middle East green, Africa south of Sahara blue, and the Americas yellow. And the size of the country bubble showed the size of the population. And in 1810, it was pretty crowded down there, wasn't it? All countries were sick and poor. Life expectancy were below 40 in all countries. And only the UK and the Netherlands were slightly better off, but not much. And now, why start the world? The Industrial Revolution makes countries in Europe and elsewhere move away from the rest. But the colonized countries in Asia and Africa, they are stuck down there. And eventually, the Western countries get healthier and healthier. And now, we slow down to show the impact of the First World War and the Spanish flu epidemic. What a catastrophe! And now I speed up through the 1920s and the 1930s. And in spite of the Great Depression, Western countries forge on towards greater wealth and health. Japan and some others try to follow, but most countries stay down here. Now, after the tragedies of the Second World War, we stop a bit to look at the world in 1948. 1948 was a great year. The war was over, Sweden topped the medal table at the Winter Olympics, and I was born. But the differences between the countries of the world was wider than ever. United States was in the front, Japan was catching up, Brazil was way behind, Iran was getting a little richer from oil, but still had short lives. And the Asian giants, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Indonesia, they were still poor and sick down here. But look what is about to happen. Here we go again. In my lifetime, former colonies gained independence and then finally they started to get healthier and healthier and healthier. And in the 1970s, then countries in Asia and Latin America started to catch up with the Western countries. They became the emerging economies. Some in Africa follows. Some Africans were stuck in civil war and others hit by HIV. And now we can see the world today in the most up-to-date statistics. Most people today live in the middle, but there are huge differences at the same time between the best of countries and the worst of countries. And there are also huge inequalities within countries. These bubbles show country averages, but I can split them. Take China, I can split it into provinces. There goes Shanghai. It has the same wealth and health as Italy today. And there is the poor inland province Guizhou, it is like Pakistan. And if I split it further, the rural parts are like Ghana in Africa. And yet, despite the enormous disparities today, we have seen 200 years of remarkable progress. That huge historical gap between the West and the rest is now closing. We have become an entirely new converging world. And I see a clear trend into the future with aid, trade, green technology and peace. It's fully possible that everyone can make it to the healthy, wealthy corner. Well, what you have seen in the last few minutes is a story of 200 countries shown over 200 years and beyond. It involved plotting of 120,000 numbers. Pretty neat, huh? But I, I love the way he tells the stories with the data so it brings it alive because otherwise normally when, when you see data even on a graph like that, plotted like that, it can be a little dull but he really brings it to life. Um, yes, because I often am not a fan of anything that has a real graph in it when showing data but he does well with that one. This is one of my favourites because I like 